On January 15, 1918, God bestowed a gift into the world in the form of a baby girl who was baptized Margaret Agnes Fritchen. For a good part of her 77 years, she lived a happy, fruitful life. Now we come together to honor the memory of Margaret, who was a kind, loving, and industrious woman, and yet who was human and had her flaws. So we must celebrate both the good and the bad that made the complete and total Margaret Agnes. Margaret was able to complete only seven years of formal education, leaving school to help care for her ailing parents. However, Margaret educated herself by reading avidly and learning the skills necessary to exist in an ever-changing world, becoming a practical and intelligent woman. Margaret worked to help her parents financially and earn a living for herself and her children. She worked at her last place of employment for 40 years. Industry was not kind to her, but she got by the best way she could. Margaret was a proud woman whose husband left her to raise two children, Sharon and Dennis, alone, and to suffer the loss of Dennis to death, alone. Susan, Michael, Daniel, and I are her grandchildren. Susan gave her two great-grandchildren, she loved us all fiercely, and we in turn loved her dearly. She was our grandma, grandmother, Googles, Nana. Margaret was an extremely honest person, and she told it like it was. She could be bitter in her words at times and swear like a trooper before it was politic to do so, but her heart was of pure gold, no matter what came out of her mouth. She was a caring, giving person, often doing without the things she really needed so her children didn't go without and helping others. She respected herself, her body, her home, and was respectful of other people and their property. A sense of humor of dry wit variety was one of her traits, and she loved to get other people going. The laughter she provided is truly unforgettable. Margaret loved animals especially Teddy, her tiny mongrel she had for six years and never replaced. How she loved God's little creatures. Most of all, the woman known as Margaret Agnes gave the world my mother, Sharon, who was an inspiration in spirituality and a living symbol of the daughters of Isabella Madonna Circle. Unity, friendship, charity, and love. For this, I thank her. She was not only my grandmother, she was a lady. And as author Fanny Flagg wrote, a lady always knows when to go. For all of this we say, we miss you. We celebrate your life. We carry you in our hearts forever. All of my life, my days have been like a storm. In that storm, there's always been a calming force around me. That is my mother. She herself is an ill woman. Yet, she found strength to nurse her ailing husband in his final days. I would do the outside running to make certain she had all that she needed but I couldn't stand the sight of my dad on his deathbed. Strong woman, hardly weak. When weak, it only lasts for a moment. She epitomizes, when I fall down, I get up, dust myself off and keep going. Recovery of spirit is always big for her. Physically down, she seeks the Lord for advisement. In my weakness, I have spoken smittenly toward my own mother. In anger, I have damaged her feelings with false accusations. In words of dispute, Lord knows, I've said the regretful. But no matter what, she was calm, always. Maybe it was God's way for her to be there for him. I don't know how she endured it, all the sacrifice. The idea of letting go and allowing to grow as a woman of independent means, by no choice 
of her own. God doesn't provide answers to the questions of why in this lifetime. But it was through all of that when I saw vividly my mother's purpose in this life. To be the calm before, during, after, and especially in the eye of the storm.